Hello, this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to do numeric inputs and do some of that numeric display stuff that, that really makes HMI fun because this is where like we can say this is how much how many numbers of a part there are or some of the other fun things that you want to do. So it's not just turning lights on and off. Um, so if you look on the screen right here, uh, you'll see a, a simple program I wrote. Basically a start bit, they'll start, a, they'll seal in a timer and turn off when it gets done. Um, I have a move command. I have a move command here that will take a, this is a dent, some of them call multiply, so I know it's being used in the multiply. Multiplying by a thousand and moving into another dent, okay? The reason for that will become obvious soon. You don't have to do it this way. I'm just kind of demonstrating different versatility. That's it. Uh, I have a set bit that will then do a, execute a move command that move whatever's in the value of dent into the timer preset. So basically it gives me ability to then set a timer automatically through the, the HMI and then have it move that preset into that timer. Okay. And then lastly, while the timer's timing, a light's gonna be on. So if I want if I want to show you, there it goes, it's toggled, it's running, you can see it's running perfect perfectly, and the light's on down in here. And it'll turn off at 10 seconds. If I put a one in here, you can see everything's here. If I toggle this bit, it moves that thousand. You can see the preset there is now a thousand. Okay. Fairly basic program. So now I'm gonna write an HMI program, which for the sake of time, I've kind of already did. And I have a basic HMI program. So let me make this bigger and zoom in. Uh, how does that look? Much better. Um, I'm gonna delete this so I can show you how to set that up and delete. And so here's the text value that I just added. We've done these start bits before. I just have this tied into the connection of the start, the start bit. So this here is linked to this bit right there. This button here, the timer set, is linked to the set bit over here, okay? We'll get to this in a second. This is a simple indicator light, and that's just set up to light one, okay? But say I want to monitor my current timer value. If I go up to objects and under numeric and display, numerical display, you'll see a value that says numeric display. And this will look like our multi-state indicators that we've been dealing with. But a couple things of note. One, I can determine how many digits I want in there, because sometimes I may not want 100 digits. I may only want two digits. So I can set that, and since most of my timers are about five digits, more or less, I'll put that at five digits. I can fill left with spaces or zeros, so, or, and I can also put in decimal places as well. Um, I can set the font. I can change the style. I'm not going to mess with the style because that's time consuming and that'll take all day to, fit, to fiddle with. All the other the size. But here's the value. Here's the important thing. So polarity just means positive or negative. I could set that to a bit that will determine if it's negative or positive. But here I'm just going to tie into my, ti my timer uh, accumulated value. Okay. Hit apply. It okay. So there's that. Now what I've done here is a similar thing. You'll see it's linking to the multiply value. So if I go back to my, it's going to this multiply value. So that's what's reading. It's just that multiply value. Um, so, but what I also have installed, and I'll show you, demonstrate, is there's another hidden little box there. Now you can make this a button, and now what I'm going to do is just delete that and just kind of set this up. But if I want to change a value by entering a, a move, uh, entering in numbers, we have to set that up by using numeric input display. So this just reads the value, and right now I'm just reading the multiply value. But if I go up into object um, numeric display, display, you'll see input enable. And for the sake of just clean, a clean display, I'm just going to put that right over this right here. And I'm going to say none, and I'm going to make it transparent. And as you'll see, it'll, it'll be clear with a green little line. You can see the highlight color here that it's there. Um, 
you can, I'm not going to put in a label because I'm making it transparent. But look here. This will allow me to pop up a keypad or a scratch pad. I'm going to say keypad, but also allows me to set up a minimum maximum value of uh, if I want to. So I can say that this is uh, say my max value is 60. I don't want to ever want it to go above uh, 60 seconds. Okay. And there's an implied decimal point. You can do some timing values, uh, but let me go to connections. And you can see here all the connections that you can do. Some things you can do some math with. I'm just going to do a direct value swap. So um, let me go into tag and let me go into main program and let me go to mole and hit apply. Okay. Now, if I just hit play, it won't necessarily, this it works, but then you may not see it work because it shows up on my screen on my left side. So let me see if I can demonstrate a little bit more. Um, but if I hit enter, I'll put in um, 10, hit enter, but it won't necessarily work because it's only gonna work in the runtime application, even though it's clicking and working. So I'm gonna hit stop and I'm gonna show you this in the actual runtime setup, okay? So let me go to test application. Hit save, ch save changes. And it's loading, of course, it's a pain and time consuming, but This is starting the application, so let me share that with you. All right, so just give it a second. Well, there's so there's my application, okay? I can start my timer, and it's starting. You can see it advance up. Everything's hunky-dory. See, so I hit OK. You can see when I click onto it, this little keypad shows up. And if I type in, I don't know, six and hit enter, you can see that this 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 area is the area of the timer preset value turns to six. And if I hit this button, it's gonna set the timer to that. And so when I hit start, oops. You can see, what, so let me hit set timer and go start. I'm clicking on my display, so I'm kind of confused. Um, but you should see it stop at six seconds. Boop, there it goes. So if I click it again, let me say two seconds. And in the because of my program, I hit set timer, hit start, you'll see that the stops after two seconds. Pretty cool. Sorry, I got to set my screen back up again so it shares. But yeah, that's how you do a numeric display and do some numeric value reading. And now we would just transfer as normal. Um, if you would to take a look, and let me stop, pause, and just do my webcam. Here, what are which time? You can see everything is there for the most part, hunky dory, and it's all displayed perfectly just fine. And if I hit the button there, I can put in three, hit enter, set my timer, hit start, and everything runs. And by the way, I see in the background, don't make fun of my Red Wings. I know they're winless this season. 
Um, and I just dated the video, but I had to say something. All right. So there we go. That is how you do a numeric display in Allen Bradley. Thank you for your time.